So you're saying that the, the addition to what I read on the Sinjadapa issue mm. was the latest filing was to seek to correct the error that led to the freezing being defrozen, mm-hmm. which is where these filings led to all these two, so yeah. there are two main things here. Mm-hmm. The issue of monies in her residence that do not seem to have any legitimate source. According to the OSP. According to the OSP. Or so they suspect. Yes. And then the strange movements in a bank account that belong to her, but money coming from the account of a deceased brother mm-hmm. without the official letter of administration. Because you know when somebody dies, mm. you cannot touch their account until there is a specific legal process triggered. Okay. So they're basically saying that that in addition to the fact that the money in the house was way above her regular income as a minister. Mm. And then they also made reference to a real estate business, which they are not very sure of its full scope. Mm -hmm. So that's my understanding of what's going on. Now, my main question to you is, is it problematic to have the OSP investigate Sisi Adapa when she had gone to court to report that her money had been stolen? No, it's not. It's not problematic. It's something that the police officers commonly refer to as complainant then accused. Right? You can go to the police and report that someone came to steal your property. Mm-hmm. Now, the police would then be initiate investigations to try and determine who actually stole. So mm-hmm. if it's, for instance, your houseboy mm-hmm. and they arrest your houseboy, if it turns out that this property that you are seeking to recover was actually even taken unlawfully or stolen from some other person, then you yourself, you become the subject of another investigation and possible prosecution. Mm. You understand? So the concept of con- complaint and tender accused is there. It's, it's not strange. It's not strange. Um, what is the problem for Cecilia Dapa? Let, 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 let me just do two quick things. Mm. If you look at the provision of... Um, Article 78 of the Constitution, it prohibits ministers from doing business Setting, yeah, okay. or holding any other public, what do you call it, office of profit. So let me read the language of the Constitution. Mm-hmm. It says, the minister of state shall not hold any other office of mm-hmm. profit or emolument, whether private or public, and whether directly or indirectly, indirectly, Mm-hmm. Right, unless otherwise permitted by the speaker acting on the recommendations of a committee of parliament mm-hmm. on the ground A, that holding that office would not prejudice the work of a minister and B, that no conflict of interest arises or would arise as a result of the minister holding mm. that office. So that is yeah. Article 78, Clause 3 mm. of the Constitution. Mm. So <clears throat> on the matter of a private business, we are told. We are told that she's involved in a uh, real estate business, mm. allegedly. Now, if that was not disclosed, mm. or her interest in that was not disclosed, mm. then there's potentially a problem there. Okay. And if there is that interest as alleged, mm. was there a permit of some kind from the speaker for it to be done? Or was this simply being used as an alter ego? Mm. using an alias to carry on that business, which will come is, is under an indirectly. Is she an MP? I thought she was a minister, not an MP. Yeah, I read the constitution. So you are saying that it's ministers. for both ministers and MPs? Okay. Yeah, no, that, the, the provision on MPs is different. Okay, yeah, I guess, But I it's the it. same thing. I, no, I was surprised because you mentioned speaker, uh, yeah, but it's, it's, it's article 78. So you need to seek leave from the speaker? Yeah. I get Article it. 78 expressly deals with ministers. Mm. And then also, the, there is also a suggestion that she has some other uh, business. Um... There was some other business that was that was mentioned that she has an interest in. Yeah. If it is the case that she has those interests mm. and the OSP can confirm that these things were, that, were done without lawful authority, mm-hmm. then there's a problem there. And if it is also the case that, well, she doesn't have a name on these things, except that someone else was used as a friend and that link can be drawn, then there will be an issue of you know, possible corruption charges that we'll be, we'll be talking about. Mm-hmm. Now, Bernard, you raised the issue of 
why a bank account will still be sending money to the minister's bank account when the owner of that ca- bank account is said to have died. Mm-hmm. Um, ordinarily, right, if a person dies, the yeah. account that the person operated until his or her death, mm-hmm. upon receiving notice from the deceased person's family, the account will be put on ice, mm-hmm. pending the production of a letters of administration, mm-hmm. le- with letter of, of letters of administration or probate. Mm-hmm. Now, there's a distinction. Mm. If you're dealing with probate, there must be a will. Mm. Which will says that we are appointing A, B, C, D person as the executor, and then he mm. will collect, you know, all our assets and liabilities and determine how it's shared according to the will, right? And deal with whatever. If there's no will, then you are talking about letters of administration, in which case you have to go to court and get the proper processes mm. uh, triggered. Mm. Now, we do not know, on the basis of what the AG has, uh, what not the OSP has put out there, we do not know whether following the alleged death, because me, I've not seen the man. <laughs> That's what I'm, I'm saying. Following the alleged death of the brother, mm. the family went to notify the Prudential Bank manager mm. that, oh, our son is dead. This is the certificate of death. Mm-hmm. And these are related documents. Letters of administration or probate. We do not know that. Mm. The OST is simply alleging that funds have been moving from that bank account into the account of the former minister. Now, there are two issues. Yeah, and they also say that mm. without the necessary... So you, there's, don't forget they are investigating. Mm-hmm. So it means that they have not cited the letters of administration mm. or the probate, as yeah. you mentioned. So they, 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 are, they are proceeding on the basis that they haven't seen these two things. Okay, so, so that settles one. The mm-hmm. other side is, it is possible for the bank not to have been put on notice because the yeah. bank is not out there to look for who is dying or who is not yeah. dying or which customer is dead or which customer is so, not So you are saying that the bank may be shielded. Yeah, the obligation is on the family to produce evidence that, oh, on so-so and so-and-so date, the person died. And we are following up with either letters of administration or probate. No problem. Now, no, no, I just want to make a a, a quick point on that. So if, for instance, if, for instance, and people should not uh, construe this as holding brief for the minister or anything. If, for instance, there is a, 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 what do you call it, a standing order. You know what standing order is? A standing instruction to the bank that, Every month or every quarter, mm. send 10,000 Ghana CDs to mm. Godfrey Akoto. Yeah. And the person who issued that order did not subsequently terminate the order. Or the bank is not informed mm. that, oh, the person who issued the, the order is no longer alive. They will keep and doing the, it. Uh, they will keep doing it. I get it. it. So, so there are many possibilities. Yeah, so let's look at that aspect of the Well, test. but don't forget that Carefully. they are saying that analysis of the statements in the account show what they call highly suspicious transactions. So they are saying they are suspecting. And don't forget that all of this is the basis for the freezing while they do further investigations. Do you understand? Yeah. So I'm not saying anybody has anything wrong. Mm. If somebody is investigating something, they can see something is irregular and mm. say that because of that, they will investigate further. And the, invest- the further investigations may prove all you are saying, which will show that there was no problem. Yeah. But the, don't forget my first question to you, which is still the main, the main mm. question is, can you have these two matters running concurrently and they not interfere in each other. Because don't forget, only both, in fact, yesterday was a very interesting day. Yesterday was September 19. Mm-hmm. Yes. Was when the matter of the original seven people accused of stealing Sinatra Plus money mm-hmm. was heard. Mm-hmm. Yes. Where the judge, where the defendants were saying that the thing is delaying too much mm-hmm. and the public is interested. And the judge said, please, don't come and give me public pressure. Let yeah, me do my work. Do my thing. Meanwhile, the prosecution too is sort of like, it's like they are slowing according to the defense. Mm-hmm. Then on the same day, OSP is also in court. Mm-hmm. Okay, so my point is, are you not going to, is, 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 how are you going to, okay, so how are you going to give justice to somebody whose money has been stolen, mm-hmm. who at the same time is being accused of having money that she couldn't account for? Yeah, see, so that's why. It's, it's, I, no and, it's to, and, 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 and it seems as if the OSP mm. will need to use a court. I'm not sure if the OSP, because OSP is a prosecutor. Mm-hmm. So they investigate and then they go to court, mm-hmm. right? So you have the state as attorney general, going to court to prosecute people for stealing Sister Rapa's money. Mm-hmm. Then you have the state through the OSP investigating Sister Rapa 
for having money that they are not sure where she even got it from. Mm-hmm. Can the same state do those two things and not conflict itself? Yeah, there's no inconsistency. That's why I told you that there's a concept known as complainant and accused. If you go and complain about something, the complaint that you have lodged, if the police have cause to believe that Kwame allegedly stole, stole this amount from, uh, what do you call it, say you for instance, right? I'm not talking about Kwame. I'm just making it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They would arrest Kwame and investigate and prosecute. Now, the fact, at the same time, so, investigating so, me for where I got the money no, from. So, so, so in the course of the investigation, if it emerges that this money that you say Kwame stole, yeah. you got it from a dubious source. So maybe you stole it or you got it dishonestly from somewhere. Or someone went... Yeah, but should that not, go, should that not trigger a, an estoppel of the original matter? No, no, no. no it Why they, fa- they check? So you can be... You can be because here, two yeah. separate crimes have allegedly been committed. The first But crime, if somebody steals stolen money, is it a crime? Yeah, it's, it's a crime. Stealing is stealing. <laughs> so it doesn't matter... It doesn't matter what you steal. Yeah, that's right. You have stolen. Have that you is. stolen? Yes. You have taken property, it belongs to somebody with the intention, blah, 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 blah. So that's legal. Mm-hmm. And I can't agree with you on the legal. But practically speaking, Sky, are you telling me that the same state mm-hmm. of uh, Auditor General, sorry, Attorney General's Department prosecuting citizens for stealing from a minister? And Article 88, yes. Then OSP investigating minister for her stolen money that they don't know where she got it from. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> because, because. If you stretch the, the complainant turn accused thing I was telling you about, the money was allegedly stolen. That's a fact mm-hmm. that has been put before the, the court. court. So the court can to determine. They, 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 they can do that on their own merit. Exactly. Irrespective of where the money came from. Exactly. So even if the money was not stolen or stolen, it doesn't matter to what the or people are accused of. Yes. So that's beautiful. Uh-huh. The other side mm-hmm. is now to deal with this money that we are talking about. Where did they come from? Now, questions have been asked of the minister. She, according to the OSP, answered those questions. Now, in the answers provided, you will see, from what the OSP is saying, mm-hmm. that there are yawning inconsistencies between what she earns, the sources of those funds, and what was found in her home. Mm-hmm. And to the extent that there are inconsistencies, mm-hmm. and to the extent that there are those that have not been explained to the, you know, to, 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 to to a reasonable degree for the, the, the OST, mm-hmm. they want to investigate how come you came by those monies and why those consistent, uh, inconsistencies. And uh. therefore, you being a minister, since you could not have afforded this property, since you could not have done A, B, C, D, we are launching into it, investigating, and if we believe, which they seem to have, Mm. actually told us mm. they believe that something is wrong and therefore they are investigating wow. and subsequently prosecuting if they so wish for now the minister or the ex-minister is not being prosecuted mm-hmm. they are just investigating yeah the law says that when there is reasonable suspicion mm-hmm. like the, the OSP says that oh yes on the basis of everything that we have investigated that far mm. the fact that there is a criminal prosecution ongoing of these people we have reasonable cause to believe that the minister engaged in possible wrongdoing. <laughs> and therefore, wow. court, you freeze the money. We will now go and investigate proper and satisfy ourselves that, mm. oh, nothing was done wrong or right. something was done wrong. Right. And if we have enough basis to proceed to court and secure conviction, mm. then we'll bring charges proper and prosecute the minister. Wow. This is very, very, very interesting. So on a legal side, you don't see a problem. Practically as well, you don't see a problem. No. Um, I'm not going to stretch it. Just the final point though, on the judge in the original case and the apparent exasperation, because I won't call it exasperation, it's almost like the retort based on the court report that look, the defendant lawyers were saying, you guys, this is getting delayed, so let's move it on. Mm. And then she's like, no, you can't force me. I'm not going to let public pressure influence how I do this case, which, in principle, is right, but do you sense pressure on the court? Because the way the public has framed this, the way the media has framed this thing, mm. is like the bigger case is where she got the money from. Mm. That's in the public's mind. Mm. So it's almost like these people who stole the money is a smaller issue. Mm. At least the way the media covers it. 
So when you see the judge say that she's not going to allow that to influence her, that's in principle very great. But do you not think that there's pressure on her and people will be looking and scrutinizing this judgment, whatever happens, because they'll be thinking that, well, you understand? Because it's, it's like, yeah, you are going to do what you want to do, but now almost everything you say in court is being reported in the media. Yeah. And that's, it's, it's a different kind of pressure. Yeah, you see, so there are two things here. First of all, judges are members of society. Mm. They listen to radio, they watch television. They are human beings. Mm. So they have a certain feel of what is happening in society. Mm -hmm. And to a large extent, even when they are looking at the text and the principles that we can distill from the law, mm. they are somewhat affected mm. by public commentary or public trial. Not as in trial in the courts, but what people say about the matter. But you see, the, the, the obligation imposed upon them is not to listen to what the public is saying. Mm. Although every now and then they factor what they hear into how they approach matters. You understand? <laughs> Which then taints the process. That's why when jury trial is being done. They sequester them. Yeah, that's put right. them they, somewhere. Exactly. Really so that they are not tainted by mm. what people are posting on social media or what yeah. they are saying on the radio station because they are human beings. Wow. So if the generality of the people for some reason feel that, ah, mm. this person should be convicted and you don't look at the text of the law, the principles properly, you go and convict the person when in fact, ideally, the principles don't allow you to convict. Now, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me make a quick comment. Mm. You know, the prosecution that is currently going on regarding the the theft matter. Mm. Yes. Um, it is the case that the judge has a power to decide for how long she wants to deal with the matter. There's something known as case management conference. Mm. When a case is being decided by the court, and these are the preliminary issues. When the processes have been satisfied, papers, you know, handed over to all the parties and all of that. They call a conference the parties come and they decide, oh, we want to do this case within this number of days or this number of months, blah, blah, blah. These are the things you do going forward. At that meeting, it is possible for the judge to agree with the parties that, look, I want to deal with this matter within six months mm. or within three months, right? Mm. Without sacrificing the rights of all the parties involved. Mm. Mm. So if a matter like this, yes, it's of heightened public interest, what stops the judge from saying that, look, I want to dispose of this matter within the next three months so that I can move on and deal with some other, other matters. Mm. The idea that we drag our feet on matters, sometimes it takes years, it does not serve the interest of justice. Mm. For instance, let me take you to the civil realm. Domelevo's matter. Yeah, we got well, that. When he was taken to court... If he had been dealt with the dispatch, yeah, that's that right. injury would have been done. Exactly. People's rights were being yeah. affected. So... Properly speaking, the Supreme Court could have said that, no, given the importance of this particular the matter, speaker. the message we want to send, the rights that are being affected, let's deal with this matter with this part. Unfortunately, they did not do that. So by the time they give a judgment... It became nuggetary, like it became moot. Yeah. But, but, but it set a certain principle. Mm. It set a certain precedent that right. you cannot do this as president. Mm. I believe that this is where perhaps the chief justice would have to intervene with the practice direction mm -hmm. and say that on the basis of A, B, C, D, certain matters must be dealt with with this person. Yeah, let us not follow the queue. Mm. They have to jump the queue mm -hmm. because of, of the importance. Yeah, yeah. Um, on, on the Cecilia da Pau matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, we, we, we might need to ask better questions of this whole asset declaration business mm. for state officials when the OSP is done. Mm, mm, it's just a question. Mm, it's mm. something we might need to get back to. Mm, mm. As to mm. the rigor. <laughs>